Hey, it's Jay. Welcome to part two of the Trinity Amps Tri-Watt build. Today I finished installing the chassis mounted components. That chair is really squeaky. Well, last time I got everything mounted on the uh, front face plate. Um, all of the components that are going on there are mounted. Back face plate will be a little bit of a different story. I'm going to install the fuse holder, the um, IEC power connector, uh, the test point jacks will be installed, uh, the bias adjust pot will be installed, and the impedance switch and the speaker jacks will be installed. Overdrive switch may be installed right now, uh, but the effects loop board I won't install right now. And that's because it's probably going to be in the way uh, when I'm soldering the main board. So I'll mount just about everything on the back panel, uh, but not the uh, effects board and maybe not the overdrive switch. So I'm going to start with the fuse holder again for no other reason than it's just the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to work from right to left. Uh, the fuse holder is keyed. So what that means is it has one flat side and it fits. There's a flat side to the hole for it as well. I'm going to tighten it fairly snug with a pair of pliers. If you hear a crack, if you hear a crack, you know you've gone too far. So I'm going to put the fuse inside just so I don't lose it. All right, the IEC connector. Now the installation instructions uh, that Stephen sends with his uh, amp kits uh, specifies which hardware goes in what. So for the IEC connector, I'm just going to look at the instructions uh, and, and see which size of uh, nuts and bolts he wants going in there. All right, so the IEC is uh, mounted to the chassis using two of the number six uh, machine screws that are provided in the kit. I don't really know if anybody's picky about which way around these go. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I just kind of always like to orient it with the uh, the narrow part so that when it's in playing, the amps in playing position, the narrow part is down, uh, just kind of similar to the way, at least here in North America, um, we plug into wall receptors and the ground is usually on the bottom. So that's the ground. I'm going to put it on the bottom. So this orientation would have it up right now because the chassis is upside down. The chassis is threaded. The, uh, the build instructions actually show uh, these screws being held on with um, caps nuts um, but I'm not going to put those in just now uh, just in case I need them somewhere else I can always thread them on later fairly tight but again you don't want to hear a crack snug that's not going anywhere so the test points will go into actually the bias adjust I'll put that in so just like on the uh, the front panel, I'll put it with the tabs. What's up right now it will be down when it's in playing position. So the bias trim pot did not come with uh, with washers on it. That's not really a big deal. Uh, you can mount it without. Uh, but I just didn't like how far the body of the trim pot was sticking out from the chassis. So I had a couple in my bins back there, and I'm just going to use those to mount this. Okay, liking the look of that. Now the test point banana jacks. Uh, these banana jack, banana jack test points, um, I know from experience they can be, the plastic uh, of the body can be quite brittle. Um, so you really wanna make sure you don't tighten these up too much. I've had these rings snap off. Um, I like to orient that with the uh, the blade uh, going this way so that it's easier to solder. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's snug enough if I can't grab the, uh, the blade back here and turn it. So that one's looking good. Gonna be a little bit of a tight solder job. I might have to uh, 
take the negative connector for the test point out when I'm soldering everything to the bias adjust pot. This is when you start, uh, when you're putting it out together and you're, you're mounting the parts, this is where you start realizing what's going to be close quarters for soldering and what's not. Um, and there's nothing wrong with taking a part back off so that you can get to the part underneath it uh, to solder. Um, mostly I like to put these things on just so I don't risk uh, losing them. It is really easy to over tighten these ones so you really don't want to do that. Anything with a plastic body just it's always tempting to keep going but plastic will let you keep tightening the nuts until it snaps. Okay, so I've got the bias adjust, the test points, I've got the power connector, and the uh, the fuse holder. The next thing to come up is the impedance uh, selector. So there's the knob for the impedance selector. And the uh, actual unit itself is in this little plastic bag. It has a... Um, it has a little tab on it and it's drilled for the tab so that the, the pot can't spin in place. The way the tab goes on this one, it's on the washer that goes on the outside. There's a, a little key in the washer and a key way. So you're kind of left to have it in the position that the amp dictates. The tabs will be at the side, but that's not really too inconvenient. On the bill of materials, I talked about the bill of materials in uh, the last video, and uh, it specified that there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chicken head knobs. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out because I only had eight chicken head knobs. And then I realized the kit used to use a chicken head knob for the impedance selector, but now it's a, a more of a uh, what would you call that, a dial indicator knob or a, almost a top hat knob. So there's the selector knob. So 4, 8, 16. Okay, so speaker jacks. I went after, uh, went after a couple of these little toothed washers to put on the back. Usually they, they come on these jacks. Uh, these didn't have them. Um, I like to put those on the back on the inside and they just kind of bite into the back of the chassis a little bit and uh, if the nut comes a little loose it can keep this from spinning. Some of these washers have a, a, a little cup to them so I always put the cup, I don't know how you're supposed to put it, but I always put the cup so that um, it's facing in toward the face plate. I just feel that that springiness also adds a little bit of tension if the nut comes loose to keep it from spinning. So for now, I'm going to leave the back panel this way. So here's what we got. You remember from last time, front panel, back panel. So today I mounted the fuse holder, the IEC connector, the test point jacks, banana jacks, the bias adjust pot, the, uh, wow, that's loud, the um, uh, impedance selector and the speaker jacks. All right, well, time to mount things to the uh, top of the chassis. So uh, that's primarily the uh, the tube sockets, 412AX7 sockets, um, the two sockets for the, um, the 6V6s, uh, the cap cans. Uh, there are five grommets to go in for the um, power transformer and the uh, speaker transformer, output transformer. And then there are a few other holes here, which I know are pre-drilled to mount um, uh, some grounding lugs. So those I won't mount yet. Okay, so the sockets for the 12AX7s, you mount them through the top of the chassis. Um, I like to mount them with the gap between pin, pin one and nine toward the back of the chassis. Uh, it just makes it easier uh, to put tubes in and out uh, if you're working blind um, or if you're in very dark space. The instructions, uh, they suggest mounting the sockets uh, for the output tubes um, from inside the chassis. And 
that's just so you get a little bit of extra room on top. If you put KT-66s in, they're a pretty large tube. And so you might have trouble fitting them if the uh, sockets are mounted to the top. Um, regarding having your, your gap between pins one and, and, and pins nine, um, it's going to work just fine if you put them in the other way around. I don't even, I've never really bothered to check if there's a convention uh, for how to do that. It just uh, always made the most sense to me to have that gap right toward the back. We got socket one, two, and three in, uh, the fourth. Uh, this is essentially all the preamp section, uh, socket, sockets for the preamp section. So we've got those mounted. We'll mount the output tube sockets next. So I'm probably not going to um, use KT-66s in this amp, although knowing me, uh, curiosity will get the better of me and I'll probably end up, will end up trying it. So I'm going to go by the advice uh, in the documentation and mount this from the inside of the chassis. Um, and again, the... Um, the key for the uh, the tube uh, base, I always point that when I have the option, I point the uh, the key toward the back of the amp. It Again, just in the dark, you know, if you're doing a gig and you have to change your tubes really quick for some reason, uh, it's just easier in the dark if you know that that tube goes with the key facing toward the back. Uh, again, I don't know if there's any convention. Uh, fender amps, mount them on an angle anyway. So, I'm just going to take this on my lap and do it real quick. Then I will use four of those Keps nuts to put the uh, the tube retainer on the outside. Okay, so there's the uh, sockets for the preamp section and the output section all mounted. Um, it's at this point that you realize, looking at this, just how tight some of the soldering is going to end up being, especially when you're a guy like me with these sausage fingers, and, uh, you know, it's pretty fiddly working in there. But such is life. That's the way it is. So I'll give you a shot of that at the top. Um, I need to put the retainers on, and those will just be held on uh, with a couple of these Keps nuts. Okay, so one trick I've come to trying to put these little tiny nuts on in, an, in a tiny space like this is to uh, take your extender and your, your socket, put the nut in the socket, and then use that to, to start the nut on the retainer. Um, okay, so that's the spring retainers. Tube shields I'll put aside for now. Okay, so mounting the can caps. So the can caps come with a, a clamp to hold them, and it mounts to the uh, top of the chassis with the uh, soldering tabs in. So one thing you want to do is you want to make sure you put the, the cap in the clamp before you mount the clamp. Just make sure that you um, your tabs aren't uh, touching the chassis. It would not be a good thing to have a, a short of any sort. So, mount that, and um, I'm not tightening the clamp uh, on the cap right now. Uh, I want to make sure that I can turn the cap to orient the, the tabs to the orientation I would like them when I'm soldering. So I will do that right after I do this, but I'm going get to the, get them mounted on this side and have a look what the work area looks like. The other thing you want to be careful about when you're mounting these is, is that the, um, the tabs for the clamp screw um, don't interfere with each other. If you mounted it, you know, I, I can't get that in there and still put the screws down. Same thing with this one. So you have to orient them, one with one clamp pointing that, uh, toward the front and one with one clamp pointing toward the back. 
um, don't forget to put the cap in. I put it in first. Um, you could put it in after the fact, but the cap has a little bit of an extra bump up lip here. And uh, that can make it difficult to put in from the top after the fact. So I put it in like this and then I put the cap on the chassis and I push the cap back down so that it, it it's resting against the body of the cap is resting against the chassis. So next thing is to turn the chassis over and just check out that we've got some kind of reasonable orientation of the solder tabs. Uh, I'm gonna just arrange them so that we've got the, 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 uh, the single tab on the outside instead of the inside. I just think that could come a little close to the, ultimately come a little close to the um, circuit board. So there they are. And now that I've got them oriented the way I want, just give them a little push, make sure they're sitting against the chassis. And I will tighten up the clamps. Don't over tighten the clamps. Um, you'll, you, you can crush the can. You just need the can to be in there snug, just like everything else, just snug. So easy enough to do. Tighten it up until it feels just a little beyond finger tight and you can't spin the, the cap. That's pretty good. And we'll just double check that everything looks good in there. Nothing shorting against the chassis and we're good. Next thing I'm going to do, and then I'm going to end after this, um, there are these grommets uh, to go through the chassis for the wires uh, to run the transformers through. Uh, so I'm going to going to put those in and then I'm going to call it quits for now. Uh, come back in the morning or later and, and install the transformers. So you just put them in the hole and snap them in. Okay, I'll be back to do the transformer shortly. That would be an indication it's time to quit. All right, I'm going to call it quits here. I'm running a little low on time for uh, this session of shooting. Um, I still have the transformers to mount. So next week I'll mount the transformers, uh, get the circuit board installed, and start putting components on the circuit board, probably even break out the soldering iron. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Uh, check out my band One Soul Thrust. Uh, all the links are down below. Uh, thanks again to Trinity Amps for making such great kits. Um, thank you for following along.